All right, we are live. What is going on, everybody? Happy Friday. Hope you've had a super, super, super sweet week. I know everyone's been busy. I've been super busy. And I just wanted to pop in here really quickly and talk about your emails. So what I want to share specifically today is the soap opera sequence. And a lot of people aren't familiar with what this is. So one of the biggest mistakes I see people make with their website is that they think the first time someone visits their website, someone's going to buy from them and become a customer. But the thing is, you actually need to have multiple touch points to warm people up from you. One of the concepts I think I've talked about and touched on before is the idea of traffic temperature. So some people are cold, some are warm, some are hot. So if they're cold, they don't know you. In fact, they probably don't even necessarily, they they probably don't even know about the problem they have and they don't even know about the solution that you have to their problem. When people are warm, they know a little bit about the problem, they know a little bit about you, but they just need a little bit of incentive and they need you to overcome some of their objections before they actually become a customer with you. And then finally, if they're hot, they know who you are. They know they have the problem. They're probably willing to buy anything that you actually put out there. There's one dude who I've bought three of his books, and he has a fourth one that he just came out with. And I was like, oh, and I bought I bought one of his books on Wednesday, and then I saw an ad for his fourth one. And I was like, oh, man, now I have to like buy his thing. So I'm in his hot audience, and I'm very likely to buy anything that he has that comes out at any point. So this is essentially the structure that I always follow. Now, I'm going to give you a generic one. I take this specific sequence and actually make it either make it longer. I have five days here. I use minimum seven at this point. I'll use 10, I'll use 14, I'll use 30 in some cases, especially if it's longer content. I want to really warm people up to me. I want them to know me. I want to tell my entire backstory. But this is kind of a general idea. So the first email, when someone opts into my list, the first email I'm going to s send to them is, I call, they call it sets the stage. I call it sets the stage, really manages expectations on what's going to come moving forward. And I'm going to welcome them to my list. So it's like, hey, welcome to my list. Here's the free thing you opted in for. Because generally speaking, when you're building an email list with cold traffic, right? People who don't know who you are, who don't necessarily know they even have the problem, you're going to need to give them something for free, right? Whether that's a free video, free cheat sheet, some sort of free thing, you're going to need to give them something of value. So in email number one, I'm like, hey, welcome to my list. Here's your free thing. Here's the deal. And then I set the expectations. I'm like, I'm going to send you an email every 24 hours for the next X amount of time. I'm going to let you know about X topic, right? You're going to get this specific value out of it. Some games, sometimes I'll have bullet points, sometimes I won't, but I'm going to let them know exactly what to expect. And that way I can just manage expectations in the future. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be like, hey, wait tomorrow in 24 hours, you're going to get an email. Here's what the title is, All right? And when people opt into my list, like they're going to get something free, but I'm usually going to sell something after that. So whether it's an affiliate product as I usually do, or if it's one of my own things, if I want to get them on a discovery call or, or a strategy session, then I'm going to let them know in that email. I'm going to be like, oh, by the way, PS, if you still want this thing, you can get it right here. All the bonuses are going away in, let's say, five days. So that's what I'll do in email number one. Email number two is I'm going to tell my backstory. So it's really all about me and why I started the business, why I did this, right? Um, You'll see in this diagram, it has the moment of high drama. One of my favorite examples is if you guys know the book Fight Club or better yet, the movie Fight Club, that whole movie and book, it starts at a high point, right? I think in the film, it shows like Edward Norton and Brad Pitt are on the so top of some movie. And I think Brad Pitt is like holding a gun in Edward Norton's uh, to Edward Norton's mouth or he's holding it in his own. I don't remember. I haven't seen it in a while, but that's kind of the moment of high drama, right? So you're kind of starting that, right? It's like you're on the edge. You you really start at that moment of high drama. And then it's like, all right, here's the moment of high drama. But it's like, how did we get back here? So let's talk to the backstory. Let's go back to the very beginning, right? Telling your origin story. Origin stories are super, super important. I've read a lot of Marvel comics and a lot of graphic novels over the years. And one of my favorite things is that, oh boy, why is it going? Oh, 
we almost glitched out and lost the live. All right, but we're back. <laughs> so one of my favorite things is let I'll talk to you about Marvel was really good at this. Like Marvel the graphic novels, not the movies. I'm talking about Wolverine. So if you're familiar with Wolverine, he's this crazy backstory, right? But they had this whole series about 10, 15 years ago called Origins. And they told the origins of Wolverine. They made a couple of movies out of it and they sucked. Um, so let's get out of the way. But they had this whole backstory where it's like, hey, here's the origin story on this character. Even if you look at Spider-Man, it's like, what's Spider-Man's origin story? It's like, oh, you know, he was the simple kid from New York City, right? He lost his Uncle Ben and lived with his Aunt May, right? And, you know, he wanted to make something of himself, you know, super, super smart dude with unlimited potential because he's a very young man. And then he gets bitten by a radioactive spider and he gets these superpowers. And, you know, he realizes that with great power comes great responsibility. So that's really the backstory, right? At the end of this, though, you want to hit a wall. Um, now, this is where it's like, hey, you know, here's, I hit this moment of high drama. I had this, you know, here's the backstory of how it happened. But at some point, I hit this wall where I couldn't move forward. I like to end email number two on that and then lead into number three because it creates the gap in someone's mind where they have to tune in to email number three to actually find out what the resolution to that wall was, right? Whatever you're basically showing them with the wall. It's like, here's the main problem that I faced. And then day three, it's like, oh, here's the one thing that I found, which was the solution. Sometimes what I'll do though is emails number two and three, I'm going to lengthen those depending on how much content I have. I'm going to make those a lot longer and I'll spread those out through anywhere from five to actually 10 emails. I'll even have multiple like mini backstories and mini walls throughout the whole process. And the reason I do this is it's because it's a soap opera sequence, right? If you guys are familiar with soap operas, every episode usually leaves you on some sort of a cliffhanger, right? Where you need to tune in to the next episode. Funny thing is, I actually watched the show Coronation Street to find out about how to write these better. That show has recently had their 10,000th episode. They've been around forever, right? Like Coronation Street has been around for a really, really, really long time. So their writers know how to how the benefit of leaving people on these cliffhangers. So what I like to do is I'll leave people on very similar cliffhangers, right? I'll usually like ask a question at the end and be like, you know, and here's what I faced. Did you want to know how it was resolved? Well, you're going to have to tune in for tomorrow's email. You know, PS offer is still there. Again, I'm still going to have that offer at the end of each emails in one of the PSs where it's like, hey, PS, you know, you can still get this offer for this. The bonuses are going away in X amount of time. Um, I'm going to have those in all the emails that I first send to people, right? So, Email number three here is, again, let's just say it was a five-day one where day, day number two, it's like they hit that wall at the end. Day three, it's like, all right, you know, so I hit that wall. Let's let's revisit really quickly what happened yesterday. So I hit this wall, right? How did I overcome it? It's like, well, I tried this. That didn't work. I tried this. That didn't work. I tried this. I was super frustrated. I was, I was anxious. I was stressed. I was overwhelmed. I felt like, you know, giving up. Then it's like, then I, someone showed me this one thing and I tried it. Right. And I was like, Whoa, this is the best. And it actually worked for me. Then I realized like, Whoa, this is what everyone else needs that has this problem. So that's when I realized I had to like spread my message. Right. It was the one thing that worked. Um, then from there, again, I'm going to have the PS at the end being like, Hey, and if you want the same results, get this thing. Um, now, in this diagram, you can see day four. It has like a little magnifying glass and then the hidden benefits. What I love to do is if you have these, share case studies or testimonials or reviews in email number four. Like I love to do that. Hidden benefits, it's like, hey, you know, here's some benefits of this. I mean, that's okay. Um, there's another copywriting formula I'll share with you guys in the future that um, I really like to use actually for this specifically. It's a four-part thing that I use with my own copy. But... I'll just, I'll either share a benefit of the product. Sometimes I'll share, I'll have like an FAQ section. Um, that's really what I do. Now, in email number five, you can see it says urgency and call to action. It's like, hey, you know, the op offer's not available. So let's say this were a five email sequence, right? In day one, what I would do is if I was offering something after they opted in for the free thing, I would be like, hey, there's five days left. Day number two, four days left. Day number three, three days left, day number four, two days left, day number five, one day left, right? And then I'd probably send like a follow-up email meaning like, hey, you know, there's only a few hours left until this offer goes away and all my bonuses are gone. That's really what I would have, have add. Urgency and scarcity is one of the biggest motivators 
to get people to actually take action and to persuade them to take the specified action that you want. So adding urgency throughout the emails here again, this is just a generic example. Like you can tweak this and be creative and use this however you want. Um, I'd really recommend you read the book Influence by Robert Cialdini if you want to learn more about urgency and scarcity. There's also another great book specifically called Scarcity on this topic. Um, very actually sad book and you'll be like, oh man, like I, I hate this kind of thing. So afterwards, I'd read a book called Abundance um, <laughs> just because you'll get sad and then you get happy and be like, oh, the world's my oyster right after. Um, but that's really what I would do. Now, what I'll do though is sometimes in email number four, I'll be like, hey, here's a case study. And then in email number five, um, I'll share like a tip and I'll kind of actually pivot between and oscillate between those two. So it's like, you know, I'll have a case study and testimonial, then I'll have like a benefit, then I'll have a case study and te testimonial, then I'll have a piece of content that I share, then I'll have another case study and testimonial, then I'll have an FAQ page, then I'll have another testimonial. Like I recently wrote one where it was, I think, 21 emails that we had in the entire opt-in sequence and we basically just pivoted between those things for like 10 emails or so and there was still very high open rates there was still actually very high click-through rates because in some cases we were just sharing links to people's content on their facebook pages or they shot a video on youtube uh specifically so that's really what we did um and then after people actually leave the soap opera sequence, what you really want to do is you want to talk about the Seinfeld sequence. And I can actually go into this a little bit further after, but those are really those weekly newsletters you're sending to your list, right? I try to send at least one of those every week, specifically on Friday, just being like, hey, you know, here's, here's kind of, you know, the high point of, or something that happened to me in that week specifically, right? I sent one a couple of weeks ago because I had a really rough, week a couple weeks ago so i just wanted to you know share my list to be like dude like i had a rough week here's you know everything that happened but here's what i learned you can't get down on life kind of thing you know and and that's how that is um in a lot of those emails i'm not necessarily going to be pitchy either there's times for being pitchy right what i like to do is i like to just bring people value for a long time and then have a pitch at the very end my mentor he spent eight months taking people from cold to warm, like eight freaking much. Like he took his Facebook profile, he turned it into a marketing tool. He didn't pitch anything to these people for months and months and months and months, just warmed them up, got them super engaged and then pitched them. And he did a million dollars in 48 hours for free with organic traffic, like free traffic, no paid ads, like free freaking traffic. Um, so this is the long game, right? People are like, oh, how can I make money today it's like oh like i want to quit my job in the next 30 days it's like dude everyone wants to do that like you're not you know you're thinking too short-sighted right don't be so myopic think long term with your business right this is why all the big corporations like a lot of people don't like them because they're always trying to pitch you on stuff right i mean i've been with the same bank for a while i don't know what value they've actually brought me since I signed up with them, they have all sorts of offers where they try and get new customers as well, where it's like, Hey, if you sign up, we'll give you a bunch of free money. Plus we'll give you a free iPad. And I'm like, cool, man. I've been with you guys for like 30 years. Like where are my iPad at you <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so, th so this is really like the long game, right? When you bring people value, like, and I got this from Gary Vaynerchuk, right? If you guys aren't familiar with his book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, I highly recommend you check that out because he talks about this a lot where it's like you jab, you jab, you jab, you jab, right hook, right? It's like value, 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 and then you ask, right? You don't, you don't force someone, you don't, like, you don't hold them at gunpoint being like, you buy my thing. It's like you ask them in a polite way. It's like, hey, you want to buy this? No, oh, that's cool, man. But when you do buy, I mean, I recommend being, you know, being a little bit forceful, right? Because at that point, it's like, dude, I brought you all this value. And people are gonna be like, ah, you know what, you have right to be to value, right? When I see Gary Vaynerchuk, like, he'll shoot a year's worth of content and just bring tons of value and like, have bombs every single day, where you're just like, whoa, that was such a good freaking piece of content. And then he'll like ask you to buy 10 copies of his book. He'll be like, yeah, you don't just need one, you need like 10 copies, you need to get them for all your friends. So you, you know, you need to kind of be like that, right? And again, I talk about this because in this group, you guys haven't seen me pitch anything, right? If you opt into my email list, sure, I'm going to offer you the one funnel away challenge, right? Because I mean, for me, that's been life changing. It's the best $100 I think I spent last year on one thing other than the more expensive programs that I invested in. But 
you haven't seen me guys pitch anything in this group. Sure, eventually I am going to pitch you guys on something in this group, right? But I'm really just trying to, you know, nurture this community and give you guys value for a while. So I suggest you do the same. You can even take the soap opera sequence and you could do this in your content as well, right? You could do Facebook lives every day where, you know, you, you create like a 30 day sequence, you go live every day. And again, you use this format and at the end, you know, there's some sort of call to action, right? I mean, you can even get people into like a little private Facebook community as we do. Um, and then basically, you know, do the same kind of sequence, have a pitch on day five, you know, be like, Hey, the cart's closing in 48 hours, which adds urgency. And then boom, like, you know, people buy from there. Um, so that's really what I recommend. Um, I'll post this link to this free resource for you guys actually right now. Cause hold on, let me just post this in the comments. Cause anytime you guys sit down to write your emails, I recommend, you know, reviewing this, right? There's even a section here where it's going to give you some prompts on how to do this. I mean, what I, what I've described is a little bit different though than what they have in here. If you guys aren't familiar with this, by the way, I highly recommend you get the book.com secrets. You know what guys, I'm, I'm going to post my affiliate link after in the comments as well. If you guys want to grab it, it's like a free book. You pay, I think it's like eight, 14 bucks for shipping. I think I make like a dollar in commission off it. So I don't mind if you guys, you know, I don't care whatever you can buy it if you want. Um, I have a copy here. I've bought my brother a copy. I bought a few other people, some copies of that book. I mean, for me, when I read it, I think just about three years ago, it was life changing. And I've read a lot of books on marketing and sales and advertising and stuff. And I mean, that book was absolutely, uh, life changing for you. Yeah, dude, I just, Samuel Lee, I just, uh, posted the, uh, the pick in the group. Um, what I'll do though is like I said afterwards, I'll paste the link specifically to dot com secrets because I think you guys I gave it to one of my friends who knows nothing about marketing. All right. Here's here's a little thing. And he's actually in this group. This guy knows know nothing about marketing. In December, I was like, Hey man, I have this idea for a business. This guy has no experience in business. And I I did this with him. I got him to read that book. Then I gave him some simple, actionable things. And we've been growing this group together. And his group is the group that he's been doing. He's been doing all like like 95% of the heavy lifting so far. And he's grown that group to over 500 people in a couple of weeks, like organically for free. And I'm super proud because I'm like, oh, wow, like the student has become the master kind of thing. Like, you know, um, and he still seeks advice for me and we're still building this out together, but it's been something, you know, super exciting process, right? And again, I gave him that book, he read it and, you know, he implemented all the stuff in it. I mean, that book, it's like, what, eight bucks again, US, I think. So totally, I think the international, it's like 15 or whatever, but totally recommend that book. So I'll post the link after it. Yeah, it'll be my affiliate link for .com secrets. I'm going to post it after whatever, you know, I make, like I said, I make a dollar for everything. I'm super transparent, as you guys know, with, you know, my earnings, whenever I pitch you, I'm like, hey, you know, this is an affiliate offer. I make money off of this, you know, I have no shame in that. You know, I totally recommend you guys do the same as well with your affiliate marketing. Um, but yeah, that's that book is absolutely life changing. So I'll paste a, the link for that as well. Um, yeah, and if you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. I have a super busy Friday ahead of me. I'll be going live actually later on my Facebook profile to give feedback on people's websites as well. So if you guys want to tune in later on my personal profile, I'll uh, give you guys some feedback there as well. Oh, I forgot to ask the replay thing. Darn, at the beginning of this. Yeah, if you're watching in replay, hashtag replay, um, hashtag Frogger. <laughs> and yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys. Have an awesome, awesome weekend. Take care. Later.